Happy 1st of March. Good morning. Good morning. Happy 1st of March. Pinch, 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 Oh, you got me. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day to wash away the pain. There's and you've written so that's 563 centimetres. Right, question six. Whose unit of measure is better, either? I put a me. Washed out by the rain. Darling, you've got to keep holding on. Hello, and welcome to March Vlogs. I'm hiding in our bedroom upstairs. The girls are just on a break from home school um, for half an hour, so I thought now was the perfect time to come and introduce daily vlogs for March, basically. Um, what to expect. So if you've never seen a daily vlog series from me before, um, you might wanna go and have a look. So my last one that I did every day was Vlogtober over on my Little Drops of Wonderful channel. So I'll link that underneath in case you want to get an idea of the kind of thing to expect. I also did Vlogmas on this channel, but I kind of did them every two to three days. So it wasn't quite a daily thing. Um, it'll be lots of daily life stuff, lots of crafty chatter probably because that's what I love to do. Lots of chatter about family, uh, about house decor because we're going to be starting the enormous job of remodelling, redecorating our bedroom where I'm currently sat. We're getting the plastering done towards the end of this month. Although the wardrobes, the new wardrobes won't go in until the end of April, but uh, we will have to take all the current wardrobes out. So I'll film all of that. We've got some work to do in the garden. We've got an arbor to put up, a wall to knock down, a new um, garden sofa to assemble, or even get it delivered. It's being delivered on Friday. Uh, there will always be a song of the day. I'm going to do that again, because that went down really well in Vlogtober and Vlogmas. So I have started a playlist I haven't made it specific to March Vlogs, I've just called it uh, this, this Little Wonderful Life playlist, I think. And I'll link that underneath and every day we'll choose a song and we'll add it. Uh, it's just a fun thing to do and we all really enjoy picking music and you might discover some music you haven't heard before or maybe you haven't heard it in a while. Um, hopefully that's the idea anyway. And on that note, actually, the song of today to begin the whole of March Vlogs, and I think very appropriate for the name of this channel, is going to be Katie Mellower's cover of Wonderful Life. It isn't, it isn't called This Wonderful Life, is it? It's just, well, yeah, Wonderful Life. Um, it's her cover. It's a really nice, mellow, uh, easy listening song that's yeah, I think it's the perfect start for spring. I've added it to the playlist. Go and have a listen, see what you think. Let me know. Um, today I'm going to do my look ahead to March. So I've done a look ahead to January and a look ahead to February this year. And I'd like to do a little chat now about what my plans are for this month, basically. I mean, you're going to see a lot of it anyway, because you're going to be coming along with me. But I thought I'd give you fair warning <laughs> as to what we're going to be doing. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was my tracker. So I spoke in January and February about using my notebooks and trackers and other things to kind of keep a log of um, various aspects of my life. And one of the things I wanted to do was a kind of bullet journal-ish tracker, except I'm not keeping a bullet journal. I've just got this lovely notebook with lobsters on it. And it actually has my Instagram name and my other channel name on it. This was um, a lovely, a lovely, lovely gift from my friend Hilary. Hi, Hilary. Um, so I set up a tracker for February. Here it is. You can see I have diligently kept it filled in throughout. And I have a little post-it here where I made notes to myself throughout the month of things I wanted to improve. I really enjoyed keeping this tracker. Um, I learned a lot from doing it in February about how I want it to work for me and how I want it to look and what's easier and, and so on, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the things I tracked for February were how many hours of sleep I got each night. Um, I find I need a, a good seven hours. I can exist on six, 
but seven hours really and I'm fine and um, eight hours is probably a bit too much for me so if I get seven hours of sleep uh, a night I've marked that I've tracked whether or not I'm getting my five portions of fruit and veg a day two liters of water I also track whether I've had a vegetarian or pescatarian day, not because I'm aiming to be vegetarian or, or anything like that. It's just um, interesting to see how it works out across the month. I do eat meat. Uh, my youngest daughter is, is a pescatarian uh, and my husband doesn't eat red meat. And I find it interesting to see how my month pans out. Um, I tracked all the exercise I did, which I'm telling you now is not a lot in February. Um, how much drawing practice I did, because drawing is something that is sort of a part of who I am, but I never do it of late. Um, I'm a parent, I work, um, and it's one of the things that just falls to the, the back burner. Um, I tracked my creating time um, outside of drawing, so sort of anything else I did, creative, knitting, crochet, stuff with the kids and so on. Um, whether or not I did a 15 to 20, uh, 15 to 30 minute clean every day. Um, I tracked the, night, the nights I had off of alcohol, um, the days where I got at least 30 minutes of daylight outside or spent time outside, my mood, whether or not I got to bed by 11.15, which is kind of a good place to aim for for me, I find. Not necessarily asleep by 11.15, but in bed by 11.15 gives me enough time to be awake enough to read for a bit. And I tracked my anxiety levels and when my anxiety happened. So what I have learned from this over February, I shall take a sip of tea. So I have learned that on the whole, I do get a good night's sleep most nights. So it was only um, maybe about a week over the course, spread out over the course of February where I didn't get seven hours sleep. Uh, my five a day is about the same. Um, I generally eat my five a day every day. There's probably about six or seven days over the course of February where I didn't quite hit that target. But on those days, I was only at about four, four or four and a half portions. So I wasn't that far under. I generally hit my water target every day. I think there was only three or four days when I didn't. And uh, out of all of the days of February, the majority of the days were either vegetarian or pescatarian, which was interesting because um, I hadn't expected that. I thought I ate a lot more meat than that. Um, exercise, I've done one, two, three, six exercise sessions throughout the whole of February, which is not very good. It's partly down to just how life is at the moment with homeschool and so on, but I have picked that up a bit. And certainly in the last three to four days of February, I really started to make sure I got out for long walks or did hit workouts or bike rides. Um, and with the swimming pools opening again soon, that should be quite good. I'll be able to get swimming again. During practice, I only managed three days out of the whole of February. Um, which is a shame, but I'm not gonna like beat myself up about that. It will come and I'll keep, I'm gonna keep that on my tracker for March to remind myself it is something I want to do even if I'm not able to at the moment. Creating time I did nearly every day. There was only two days when I didn't have creating time. So that's obviously something that um, I never have a problem finding time for. And also obviously, because I do creative stuff with Phoebe, I do count that if we're doing drawing, coloring, painting or whatever together. Um, so that helps. Uh, my 15 to 30 minute clean has been difficult. Again, homeschooling and working leaves you very little time for anything else. And we're obviously tearing apart our bedroom and dis dis distributing it all over the rest of the house, which makes things very difficult to stay on top of. But I definitely did it for at least more than half of the days. Uh, no alcohol, I did as I usually would. I'm quite happy with my no alcohol days. Uh, 30 minutes outside, probably about half the days, and I was really surprised by this, and I wouldn't have said that had I not tracked it, I would have said I was outside nearly every day, but actually the days I work, I'm homeschooling in the morning, and straight into work in the afternoon, I can't go outside, there is no daylight hours when I can go outside, so I never get to do that on those days, but that will change once the girls are back at school, um, so yeah, I'd like to try and work on getting outside into daylight more. Um, my mood on the whole was generally okay with a couple of low days and a couple of pretty good days so that's quite good uh, bed by 11 15 didn't do so well on <laughs> maybe about eight to nine days we got to bed by 11 15 and my anxiety was pretty much uh, a feature throughout February and one of the things that really came out of tracking it was my anxiety is very much generally in the evening rather than in the day. That's when it really kicks in. Um, 
and it's almost entirely 100% connected to um, anxiety about noise, um, which is partly because the noise exists from neighbours. We live in a Victorian terrace, there's always going to be noise. They're very old houses separated by, I don't know, bricks and a bit of dust or something. Um, but I sh I'm very sensitive to it, uh, so I, I don't know how to address that, but it's good that it's on my tracker. So for February, I've changed my pens. So I've been using my old, my old favourite pencils that I've had for quite a long time now, which is my Faber-Castell Polychromos. I've only got a set of 12. They're quite expensive, these pencils. One day I'll invest in a, in a bigger set, but for now my 12 are doing me just fine. And I bought the girls some pastel highlighters in the pound shop in Poundland. And they were so good, I bought myself some. So they just, they were like, well, they were pound, obviously, pound lamb. Uh, and you get six pastel colours in a kind of rainbow, uh, rainbow set. So I've used that to set up my March tracker. Um, you can see there. I haven't made it extra fancy. That's not what this is about. And I've kept to the rainbow order of colours to make it look a bit more ordered. And I've already filled in my first square. Can you see? I got seven hours of sleep last night. And then I've got my key down at the bottom here for my mood, um, for any exercise that I do, and for my anxiety. And again, I'll make, I'll keep a post-it and track any changes that I might want to make going into April. So I'm going to definitely continue with this. It's something I enjoy doing, and I've really learned a lot from tracking those kind of um, mental and physical health things over February. So I've enjoyed it. The only other thing to note is that some vlogs during March will be long and some will be short. This one will probably be quite long because I've been jabbering on for ages. <laughs> and others might be quite a bit shorter depending on what's going on. And the content will vary massively day to day. And I just hope you enjoy it. I've also got a load of questions that loads of you were kind enough to uh, give me on a post that I did on the channel. So I've written all those down and I'll try to address those or do them throughout the month. I've written them all down. So I've got, um, I've got questions about, uh, for example, uh, favourite charity shop finds, because you know that we, we love a good rummage around a charity shop. Um, handmade items. A couple of people have asked for a simple amigurumi tutorial, because I'm running an ami along over on my knitting and crochet channel at the moment. So yeah, I'll have a little think about that. I think that would be interesting. A few how-tos, crafting, cooking, sharing recipes and snacks and there's a few other questions about books and my crafting life and stuff so I'll try to address those as we go through the months so if you have any questions as well leave me a comment underneath I'll write them down and try to answer them as we go we're also entering birthday month or birthday season I should say we have two birthdays this month Dan um, is on the 25th and Lilia is on the 31st so Dan is actually going to have two lockdown birthdays I think we come out well, we come out of the first stage of lockdown on the 28th, I think, or 28th or 29th of March. So he was the, one of the first lot of people to have a lockdown birthday back in March last year, and he's going to have a second one. <laughs> Poor Dan. Um, but I am going to be making him a chocolate and Guinness cake for his birthday, he has requested. So that should cheer him up. And Lilia is right at the end of the month, so she will have a little bit more freedom by then, but not a lot. And she will be back at school, so at least she'll be able to see her friends. And then we go into April, which is which uh, sees my mum's birthday and my birthday. Oh, but that seems far off. It seems a long way off right now. But I'm looking at how the months have gone so quickly over the past year. I know it'll be honest before we know it. I can't even believe we're doing looking ahead to March already. Another thing to note about March is it's obviously the time we start to think about the garden and growing stuff. We grew a whole lot of tomatoes last year and I think we're going to get a bit more adventurous this year and try and grow some other things. We're definitely going to be growing chamomile because I really liked having those dried flowers for making tea. I want to get some lavender planted in the garden. We're going to be taking out some old plants that aren't working, putting in some features in the garden, uh, growing some more vegetables and fruit and stuff. So yeah, I'll try and share if we do plant anything in March. I know last year we didn't plant anything until sort of first week in April, but I'll share whatever we do. Right, I'm really yabbering on now and I've got to go back to homeschool. This is the last week of homeschool. They're back to school. Well, Phoebe's back to school on Monday the 8th. Lily is back on Tuesday the 9th. 
the first day they're both back at school, I'm going to just sit and watch Bridgerton because I've started watching that. I'm quite enjoying it. It's a little bit racy. Yeah. But I'm going to um, I'm going to watch that, finish watching it and do the amigurumi I'm making for Lilia's birthday and just spend all day doing that and just enjoy being without homeschool. Right, shut up talking. Much excitement. We've had a delivery. We ordered some fabric -y bits for dressmaking because Lilia wants to have a go at making a dress. So she's chosen a pattern, a McCall's pattern, and she chose some fabric. We ordered it all from Minerva Crafts and Phoebe chose one as well. So Phoebe's chosen a beginner kids pattern for making a little elasticated waist skirt. And she's chosen some, we, we just chose some quite cheap and cheerful fabric, and I have to say, it's very cheap and cheerful. Uh, it's quite, it's quite sheer, but I'll try and get a decent interfacing, which I'm about to talk about. And Lilia chose this pattern, which is absolutely lovely. She wants to make the top version there. Isn't that nice? Uh, Number 7950. I don't know anything about sewing from patterns. So this can only go disastrously, really. And the fabric she chose is really lovely. It's a really nice quality one. I really like this. And it's got the hearts and things. But the interfacing, which I ordered, this was all for Minerva Crafts. And I, I followed the directions. I looked at what we needed. I ordered a lightweight dressmaking interfacing. But it's like... It feels like paper. It feels like really crispy. I'm probably not going to be able to show you this very well. Can you see? It won't come across, but it's kind of... It's not materially, it's not flexible. It's stiff like paper. So I called them and sort of said, Oh, I'd quite like to swap it. Can you recommend one that's a bit better? And they weren't terribly helpful. They just kind of said, well... That's how they are. That's how that brand is. Like, hmm, okay. So I think what I might do is get the brand one that I recognise, which is Veline, which you can get from John Lewis. Might be able to get it from eBay. But if you're a dressmaker and you can recommend a lightweight, uh, fusible interfacing, please do let me know because I don't want to use this. I don't, it would be scratchy against her skin and it wouldn't look nice. Anyway, much excitement. We're very excited. Now we've just got to work out how to read a pattern, how to use a pattern, and how to sew a garment. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> it's lunchtime. <laughs> Lilia's about, uh, Phoebe's about to have her lunch. Lilia's going to come through in a minute. If you can hear banging, it's Dan bashing out the last of the bricks from the wall outside, which I'll show you in a second. And whilst they get their lunch together, I'm going to go and do a really quick... 20 minute workout. I'm going to do a workout by Fitness with PJ. Um, she's really lovely. She's completely bonkers. She's so funny. She'll get halfway through a workout and start talking about the time her cat weed on her or something, which is hilarious. It distracts you from the burning pain in your thighs during the squats. Uh, but she does a lot of workouts for women over 40 uh, that build muscle mass and so on. And they're really, really good. And I just find her fun to watch. So she's got some 20 minute ones. 20 minutes is all I've got on a day like today. So whilst they have lunch, I'm gonna very quickly go through and do that. And then I'm gonna have my lunch because I am starving. Hi. The wall is gone. Yeah. Okay, it was a really short one 20 minutes it was quite hard but I don't feel like I got up enough of energy so I might have to aim for maybe a 25 minute one but that's hard in the day so I'm glad that I did it and now I'm going to make a healthy stir fry for my lunch so whenever I um cook onions if I have a little bit of excess or sometimes I deliberately make sure I have a bit of excess I freeze the partly cooked um, onions 
so that if I ever need just a small portion, I can help myself. So because it's just me having a little miniature stir fry for my lunch today, I'm just going to get a little bit of onion out to include. Just going to dig some out. That looks about right. Let that defrost whilst I get everything else ready. And just cook it from frozen basically and that'll add a lovely bit of flavour to my lunch. Just managed to set all the smoke alarms off cooking my stir fry. Not sure how I managed to do that. So we had to open all the doors, but it's stopped now, thankfully. So I'm gonna go and have my very yummy and massive looking, but not very high in fat or calories lunch. And I think I've done enough talking and blethering for one daily vlog. So I'll say goodbye now, because I need to edit this and my podcast today. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye. And it will restore us. Nothing